Bethesda has definitely made a lot of mistakes over the last couple of years, especially in regards to Fallout 76. And maybe that word, mistakes, kind of minimizes the damage and all the chaos that has happened, but let's just put all of that to the side for at least this video, or at least a second or two. Because even right now, the community is angry about the current state of the game and a huge event being delayed due to bugs. Again, we'll save that maybe for another day. But in its entirety, Bethesda isn't this completely evil company. I know, surprise. There's pieces of this company that are, in my opinion, destructive with decisions that, you know, I, I kind of hate that they've made, but still, there are a lot of hardworking developers and employees, community managers, passionate about delivering great experiences for you and myself. Now, one thing I absolutely love is developers communicating with fans, and no, I don't mean the various game companies that pay off and give exclusive benefits to huge YouTubers or streamers, like the EA Game Changer program, or the yearly Call of Duty event in which every popular influencer pretends to give a crap about the latest game for a few months. What I mean are developers actually reaching out and interacting with just everyone, all the fans. We've seen that quite a bit thus far with Cyberpunk 2077, in which the developers Developers have consistently communicated with fans through all means of social media. Hell, CD Projekt Red even had a developer and a community manager go on and support a small podcast about the game. Anyway, this level of interaction and communication is it's great. Now with Bethesda, they have a massive community and one of the biggest names which took off a few years ago was Shirley Curry, or as she's better known, Skyrim Grandma or Gamer Grandma. She's genuinely just the sweetest, nicest woman at I believe 84 years young, and what happened or how she grew to fame on the interwebs was that she played Skyrim about five years ago and uploaded a sort of let's play video which just blew up overnight. In 2019, in the gaming grandma documentary which i highly recommend that you check out in its entirety links again are always down in the description below skyrim grandma explained her rise to fame and how it took her by shock the first time i started to record i thought i like to talk so well, i can do this so i did and then i went to bed and just didn't think any more about it hi this is grandma shirley and I'm playing Skyrim. And I thought I'd like to take you along with me if you'd like to go. I've already gone through the preliminaries at the beginning and uh, I've been to Riverwood and I've gotten the quest to go to White Run and ask the Jarl there for help. Somebody took it and put it on Reddit and it went viral. The next morning when I got up and turned on my computer and opened my email, there was thousands of emails on there. I had no idea it was from that video. I didn't know what it was on there. And it scared me and it made me cry and I didn't know what to do. <laughs> So I think the appeal with Skyrim Grandma is just how adorable or how gentle her content is. She's not taking it too serious and she's just trying to have fun with her audience while role-playing with different characters in Skyrim and also, I mean, just the idea of a grandma playing video games like all of us, it's, it's pretty darn cool. And it's also very neat that she refers to all of her viewers as her grandkids. Anyway, Skyrim Grandma's popularity got so massive that in 2019 a petition was set up by a fan asking Bethesda to immortalize Shirley Curry as an NPC unique weapon or location in the Elder Scrolls 6. And the description stated, Shirley plays the Elder Scrolls 5 Skyrim as well as other first person RPGs in a way that is often received as fresh and gentle as well as entertaining and thoughtful. Sadly, the next Elder Scrolls game won't be released until Shirley is 88 years old, which means that unfortunately she may not get to play it, as Bethesda has demonstrated demonstrated with another fan named Eric West, they're willing to include dedicated fans of their series into their games. And for those unaware by the story of Eric West, he was a massive Elder Scrolls fan who had deep knowledge of Oblivion's lore. Bethesda was so impressed that they gave him an in-depth tour of Bethesda, or well, the studio, and decided to create a character named Eric in his honor. Unfortunately, Eric did die of cancer six months before the release of Skyrim, but Bethesda did immortalize him 
in the form of Eric the Slayer, an NPC. A few years later, Bethesda would do this again with the Fallout 4 Nuka World NPC, Evan, which honors another avid fan of the franchise who passed away. See, the brother of Evan took to Reddit thanking Bethesda for bringing the two together through the Fallout games after their father had died. Bethesda actually had seen this Reddit post, so they sent out a care package of Fallout merchandise to the brothers, but unfortunately Evan, who had run into his own health complications or issues, passed away before the package arrived. To make up for this delay, Bethesda promised to include Evan as an NPC in Nuka World, which they did. Now, switching back to the Shirley Curry petition, it reached over 49,000 supporters and did in fact get the attention of Bethesda, who announced in a 25-year celebration of the Elder Scrolls franchise that they would in fact be immortalizing Shirley Curry into the Elder Scrolls 6. With the encouragement of the fans, we're even immortalizing Skyrim Grandma using that technology. This means a lot to me because I would be extremely happy to know that somebody else was playing with my character in a future Elder Scrolls game. Skyrim Grandma was also one of the first to debut Bethesda's new technology for the Elder Scrolls 6, as you can see in that short clip. Either way, it was definitely a great gesture. Shirley would discuss the experience with the YouTube channel Localish. Invited me to come to their studios at Zenomax and gave me a tour and everybody was so sweet they kept coming out of their little office cubicles to meet me and and i got to meet todd howard himself which was exciting he said they was going to send me out to california to a studio to be scanned and uh, so that they could make me a character in their next game so that's exciting and it really looks real it's going to be so cool you have quite an army ready to defend your right. eyes and pull you into this game. How have your fans reacted to the fact that you're being made into a character in the game? <laughs> They're going crazy. So hopefully you have an understanding of this loving, gentle woman who just wants to spread some joy to the world, well in particular the gaming world. She's not exclusive to just Skyrim content, but that's what she is known for and she uploads new content quite a bit, having over 1200 uploads on her channel since the infamous beginning which started for her on September 18th, 2015 with Skyrim Episode 1, a video viewed over 2 million times. But here in present day, things are not going very well. And a few weeks ago in a video now gaining traction, Skyrim Grandma simply sounds defeated. As Kotaku reports, Skyrim Grandma, aka Shirley Curry, is one of the most pure, honest, and wholesome video game streamers around. It is absolutely heartbreaking to learn, then, that she's had to make a new video specifically for the people who cannot stop upsetting her. Curry explains that she's tired of constantly being on the receiving end of comments that range from irritating to hurtful. Good morning, grandkids. Uh, this is probably going to be short, I hope. Um, it's not going to be a happy video. But uh, there's some things that I have to say. And there's some things I'm going to have to do. And uh, I just want to let you know. Um, my health isn't very good. My blood pressure is going insane my stress level is way too high and uh, i'm going to have to take control of it uh, some of the comments are stressing me out way too much and if i look like i'm reading this i am i had to make everything i wanted to say so i didn't forget anything i know that i shouldn't uh, let these things stress me out, but they do. That's just the way it is. From now on, I will respond to very, very few comments. I will be deleting a lot of comments. This is what I mean by she sounds defeated. Comparing it to her past content or even the previous clips in this video, you can tell this has been weighing heavy on her for a while. It should be mentioned that this was her most recent upload three weeks ago. Skyrim Grandma is someone who likes interacting with her community. She reads, I believe, all of the comments she does receive on uploads, and she responds. That takes a lot of time, and unfortunately, as you all know, YouTube is a, well 
the comment section usually gets quite, it can get nasty, or most of the time it does get nasty. I think a lot of creators typically just get used to the absolute insane and outrageous things people send, but next Skyrim Grandma further explains what specifically is bothering her. Here are some of the reasons why. I've played Skyrim for years, and I know about the HUD, I know about the different mechanics, of how to play the game and I don't have to be reminded and told all the time. Any comments I see like that is going to be deleted. I don't have to be told about what games to play uh, and describe to me what the games are like. I look at all the games. I'm a gamer. If I wanted to play them I would be playing them. And when I tell somebody no, that's a simple answer, easily understood. You don't need to come back with why, because I don't have to explain myself. So as I said before, the comment section on YouTube can get quite crazy. And I just don't get a lot of these people. This isn't your typical YouTuber, this is a gentle, older woman who just wants to experience some fun. Clearly she's not trying to do speedruns or become the best player in the world, she's just trying to have fun try different gear, try different things, and engage with her fans. This is actually something that she mentioned in her early days that bothered her. Some people would make pathetic jokes about her age, saying that she won't make it to the end of the Let's Play, and or certain commenters would act like gatekeepers telling her to go knit and sit in her rocking chair. In a PC Gamer interview in 2016, when she was rising in fame, she discussed what she's been having to deal with. I think of these people that are on my channel, and I don't want them reading that nasty stuff. I want my channel to be a good channel. I've actually had some comment back and say, I'm sorry, Grandma Shirley. I won't talk like that anymore. That surprised me to death. They need somebody to try and teach them some manners. Evidently, they don't get it at home. And then she continued talking about how, even back in 2016, this was a lot. It gets very exhausting. It really does. But I don't want to stop because I feel like my fans have taken their time to watch my videos and taken their time to respond to to them and talk to me. The least I can do is reply, but as her channel continues to grow and with the number of comments she receives, that responsibility she feels becomes heavier and heavier and she doesn't have enough time in the day to respond to everyone who reaches out. That kind of hurts me. The obligation makes me feel worn out a lot of the time, but the obligation also makes me feel guilty. Oh my god, I hope my son doesn't hear me say that. She laughs. It makes me feel guilty if I skip a day or two. And also in 2016, speaking to Senior Planet, she said that some young people People thought I was a kid pretending that I was using a voice changer, and some young people thought it was outrageous that I was on YouTube playing games. I don't get much of that now, but they used to tell me to get off that I don't belong here. I'm trying to get the idea across to people that gaming on YouTube isn't just for young boys, it's for girls and for older men and women, and I'm here to stay. Just think of all those young people who are gaming now. When they get old, it will just be a natural thing for them to be there on YouTube. I wonder if they'll look back and think, oh hey, I'm doing the same thing that Grandma Shirley did when I told her to get off here. Now, Nasty stuff, and for a lot of people, even if it's just a few negative comments like this, it can weigh on you. I certainly let negative comments get to myself all the time. I can only imagine how this must feel for an 84-year-old woman. I only started recording a few years ago because a handful of subscribers I had at the time asked me if I would, and I just did it for a lark. And this is what all has happened. I can't deal with it. Now, going back to this Kotaku article which covers this situation, uh, furthermore, Curry also goes on to emphasize that this is all about fun. This is kind of what I mentioned earlier. She's not trying to speedrun or go through max levels. This is just about enjoying the company. I mean, she really views her audience as a family, and she wants that conversation, she wants that interaction with her community. Now, she also mentioned that aside from the comments, though, another issue she's confronting is that the nature of streaming has her stressed out. She has a ton of YouTube subscribers, 829,000 at time of posting, yet most of her videos are only getting five to 8,000 views, that among those who do watch, most are only sitting around for an average 
average of 5 minutes, when the clips go for 30 to 50 minutes. I'm wasting my time and it's stressing me out, she says. Upset that she's telling stories through a roleplay that she feels nobody is watching or appreciating. As a result of this, and in addition to a much stricter comment policy, she's going to be stepping back from trying to post once a day after she takes a two week break, and will be doing things at a rate where she'll be uploading a lot less videos. I'm trying to get my health under control, I'm not trying to be cranky. And that ultimately should be the goal, I mean, I understand YouTube is a, it's an evolving platform, everybody moves on to the next big thing afterwards, and she really put an emphasis on how this just started because there was a couple of people that wanted to see her play, and that's that was really her goal with this, and as things got bigger and bigger, it just seems like YouTube's taken a very big toll on her. And this is something, like I mentioned earlier, a lot of content creators run into. It's just that an 83-year-old, 84-year-old running into these issues... I can honestly understand why she has not uploaded in three weeks, and a break is definitely needed from this platform a lot of the time. And yes, I mentioned this again also before, but just one nasty comment, it really can ruin the day. And in that video, just it's just so... It's just sad. It really is sad seeing the tone that she has and just how demoralized she is from all of this. And yes, analytics, I swear on this platform, just can drive people. It can really ruin things just seeing the performance going down and down. That's something that a lot of YouTubers run into, and that's something that the platform doesn't do a great job at handling or really thinking about mental health, but that's really just what YouTube has always been about. It's about the next shiny thing, and Skyrim Grandma was a cool thing for a while, and a lot of people moved on, sadly. But what I find more disturbing is the fact that the people that are sticking around seem to be causing some trouble, or just driving her up a wall. And as she said, this is just all for fun, so I don't really get why people have to have to be this way. Like at one point in the video she also mentions, I'm not enjoying recording anymore at all. It's no longer fun. I feel like I'm under a microscope all the time. I have much more fun and I play much better when I'm just playing by myself. It puts a lot of pressure on me and any gamer when people are watching them play, especially when they nitpick everything. And this is just, it really is just sad to see, but fortunately as this title kind of gives away, the internet is coming to her defense and I think a lot a lot of people are just sad to see what's happening right now. As a content creator, if I were to give advice, it would be just to tune out the haters and maybe adapt the content, or, well, first and foremost, worry about your health. But in this specific scenario, it's a little bit different because she's not looking to, you know, become million subscriber channel. She's just looking to entertain what she considers her family. And all I can say is just worry about health first and foremost. I think that there's a large group. I think those analytics are definitely misleading. I think that's one of the things I hate about YouTube. A lot of these people that are actually clicking on these videos are probably just people that have never watched her. And the actual, there probably is a large group that are watching all of the content. It's, it's just very difficult to make it out through these analytics because the analytics make it look 10 times worse than what it actually is, which is why I hate how corporate YouTube has become in the years since. But what I can say is just concentrate. I think there's a lot of people that are actually watching this content full, and the analytics just ignore. That's the best word of advice. Regardless, I think she's right to want to have things change, but even with my own advice that I gave, I have no idea what's going to work best, because I operate from the point of view that if people aren't watching, I have to adapt or do something differently. For Skyrim Grandma, the problem really just is the fact that YouTube is it's pretty toxic and can be draining on one's mental health especially if things aren't going in the right way. I really think the best course of action is to stop caring about the analytics and concentrate on the overwhelming support that I typically see with her content, more than really any other YouTube channel that I can think of. A lot of people love Skyrim Grandma, and I hope she understands that the vast majority, the 99% adore her. That's clear from the reaction to this news. On Twitter, you have thousands of accounts outraged that anyone is attacking and or being mean to Skyrim Grandma. I really just hope she sees all of this and understands the impact that she's had on so many with her content. Even just last month, on the r slash gaming subreddit, she had a happy birthday post with over 80,000 upvotes. But I do think clearly the big issue for her is having an 800k subscriber channel with only around 7k views per video or less, and the YouTube analytics saying only 5 minutes of say a 50 minute video is being watched. Unfortunately, if that doesn't change, maybe scaling back content further is for the best. No matter 
what, there will be a loud community of gamers there to support Skyrim Grandma with whatever she decides, because right now I think many are upset and even sad seeing her so demoralized. They just want the best for her. Anyway, the internet can be a dark, horrible place a lot of the time, and unfortunately, just nobody gets a free pass. Nobody. But what do you make of the losers bothering Skyrim Grandma? Let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below, but thank you for watching. Make sure to leave a like if you did enjoy this video or if you found any informative value, and make sure to follow my other social media accounts for updates on new videos. Links are always down in the description below. I'm most active on Twitter giving opinions on news that I do not always get into video form, so do make sure to follow me over there. Also check out my Discord for all sorts of discussion on games. And again, thank you for joining. Consider subscribing for more more videos like this, and I'll see you later.